One of the biggest stories in the bike industry recently was the entry of SRAM into the motor market. And SRAM being SRAM, this wasn't simply a case of just joining the arms race with more power, more torque, or a bigger battery. Instead, SRAM's USP is a fully integrated motor, battery, and drivetrain that it calls powertrain. Now we've both had a chance to spend some time with the new motor, so we thought it was a good opportunity to spend a little bit of time talking about our first impressions totally. and going into some of the details that we've sort of uncovered while we've been riding it. When I say this was a brand new motor, a new entry into the motor market, I was a bit lying there a little bit because this has been it around. You weren't lying, you're just mis it's just misleading. Um, <laughs> this motor has been around for a while. It's a bros motor and obviously Specialized have been running a bros motor for I don't know how long now they yeah. had. Anyone who's ridden a Turbo Levo or owns a Turbo Levo will have used this motor in Absolutely. some shape or form. Uh, yeah. So what are the numbers on the motor? Peak power was 680, is 680, it? 680. Yeah, which, which is a lot. And that's over 100 watts higher than the one in the Specialized yeah. unit. And you feel it, don't you? Like, I mean, the first thing, my first impression was when I took this bike, just I actually, I didn't know anything about powertrain because basically I just turned up and they're like, well, yeah, it's all, it does it all for me. Well, if it does it all for me, then you don't need to tell me. So I just rode off. And the first thing I noticed was, oh, this bike's really pokey. Yeah. It's yeah, powerful. It's, it is. Yeah, so we've got 680 watts peak power. Yeah. Torque is 90 newton meters, which I think is yeah. the same as the Specialized. Specialized so no, no yeah, change yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. But they're good numbers. They're like, they're high performance numbers. Yeah. But I think the key thing about this motor that I really like when you ride the bike, the motor doesn't rattle when you're coasting. Yeah, it's a huge benefit. If you come off a Shimano or a Bosch, it's such an advantage. You just feel like the, the bike is silent. It's just rolling like beautifully along the trail. It feels like a normal bike. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's how it should be. It's what we've been, it's what bikes have been evolving to become for like years from downhill, trying to make the bikes as quiet as possible. And we, we should point out this is not the noise of the motor when, when no. you're pedaling up a hill or it's, something. It's the freewheel in the motor just clack, 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 yeah. clack, 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 yeah. clack, clack. The whole, every time you hit a bump, it, yeah. just, it just rattles. So one, one big advantage already. It's, it is, it's a big advantage. And the, and the key thing is that if you wanted that in the past, you basically had specialized. And now there's four brands that offer a motor that's quiet when you're coasting. So we've got two brands here. We've got Propane and we've got Nuke Proof. Yeah. What are the other two brands that have got the powertrain? Uh, so Gas Gas yeah. and Transition. Yeah, so that's that's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, it's a good spread. Yeah. Uh, and I think 100% there'll be more joining the party. So those are numbers on the motor. The display is pretty similar to the Specialized display too, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's really similar. Doesn't have quite as much information on it, which some, some might say is a good thing. So might. we've got power mode, which is range or rally. Yep. So there's two, only two power modes, only which is modes. pretty weird, like because most have five, four yep. or five modes. Um, you've got your battery life, yep. and then you've got, which is the bit that's kind of the, the unique thing to this, it's got auto shift on or off. That's right. That's yep. it. On the power mode front, you can customize those power modes. Do you think two is enough? Uh, I wasn't bothered by it. Yeah, but then me neither. But then I've got this has got the big battery in it. So I'm kind of like I can be kind of power hungry. Yeah, but I had the small battery yeah. and I still don't really worry about okay. it too much. Because you could what you could do is have your keep your rally at full power and then you could take your range mode and put it wherever you wanted. Yeah. So if you really did want to conserve your battery, you could have it really like really gentle assist or you could have it like in the middle or somewhere even closer to your rally mode if you just wanted something that was a little bit less pokey yeah. for climbing. But I still think I know they want to keep it simple, but I haven't spent enough time, we had three days each, I haven't spent enough time on it where I'm like thinking maybe I want an in-between mode, I don't know. Yeah. Um, we haven't talked about batteries. So no. like power, there's two power modes, there's two, two batteries. batteries. Yeah. Again, really quite simple. So this bike's got 720, so that's yep. the big battery. Yep. And you've got- This is the 630. So yeah, 630 is kind of same sort of battery capacity as like a Shimano. Shimano EP801 yeah. yeah, yeah. or whatever. So the main reason they've done it Obviously, there has an implication on range, but they, they're kind of selling it as a weight differentiator. About a kilo, kilo difference okay. in, in weight between the two. And I think also, like, there'll be people that want to race these bikes. And what I've found out from when I did, like, previous e-bike tests and stuff, and I've moaned about, like, oh, it's only got a 631-hour battery. It's not going to be enough range. It kind of annoys me. They're like, yeah, the racers don't want it. The racers want a smaller, lighter battery because they're going to change their battery three times in an event or whatever. So they don't want to be carrying around extra battery capacity yeah. that they never need. Yeah. Having the options great. Yeah, totally. Yeah, because most consumers want the biggest battery they can. Yeah, exactly. But if we're going to talk about battery life with these. So my experience with this bike, which is running soft compound max grip tires front and rear, I got nearly 1,600 meters of climbing and descending out of uh, okay. the battery. Yeah, that's pretty, small that's, battery. That's, 
That's which I thought good. was really good. Yeah, yeah. So we're in pretty much agreement up till now. <laughs> <laughs> yep, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the other USP with this bike is the integration of the drivetrain and auto shift. Yeah. Controversial aspect of the bike as well. Yeah, probably, yeah. It's, it's definitely opinion divider. It's yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, people generally don't like being dictated to the machine or, telling them yeah. what, to, what to, to take yeah. over to take control take, exactly yeah, yeah. Um, especially if you're an experienced rider or you know you're like oh, well i know best what metrics are they using to determine when you should change gear when you should change gear or when oh, the, oh, sorry when, when it should when, it, when the yeah. system should change gear. Uh, Correct. so they've got a cadence sensor and then they've got a, a speed sensor yeah. which is a, li a little bit more advanced than most brands because yes, it's six six magnets and so a magnet between each rotor yep. bolt basically so they get a more accurate speed sense yeah. yeah so i think those are the only two data points they're using at the moment so there's no tilt sensor or, or, accelerometers. or accelerometers on it to... so it, ha it has them but they're not being used as part of the the algorithm okay. at the moment okay so i think that's something that's going to come down the line okay and could really make a big difference it could transform it the, like i think i think it could it. transform it yeah, yeah. So with the controller, you can switch auto shift on or off, and then you can fine tune the adjustments, can't you, on how, on, on yeah. how the auto shift behaves? That's right, yeah. So you I think you have six yeah. settings. Yeah, plus or minus three. Yeah. Yep, and then that will bias when it changes gear. So if you, it will either hold on to a gear for longer, if it thinks you want, you want to stay in that gear for longer, or it will shift earlier if it thinks that you know, you want to use the power of the motor more than your leg power. So. It's RAM are calling that pedal speed, isn't right. that correct? Like it's kind of cadence or pedal speed, I think they're referring. They're not, they're not calling it cadence because yeah. no one knows what cadence is. Yeah, but they're thinking pedal it's speed, pedal right. speed. That so basically, sense. so yep. plus more pedal speed, minus less pedal speed, then that, that's when the, the shift initiates. Yeah, I think the, the plus, as you say, you can basically rev higher yeah. and it won't shift yeah. down into a harder gear so soon. Where did you end up? I think I was on plus one. Most of the time, yeah. I, I was when I first rode it in Italy, which was two months ago. I was on. I ended up on plus three, and then when we were out yesterday, plus three just didn't work for me at all. So I went back to plus one, or even to mid. So and then like there's been a lot of updates. So to, you mean it didn't shift? It did. Yeah. You were wanting yeah, it to yeah, shift. Yeah, I wanted but it to shift. Where it was the other way? I was kind of like it was shifting. I didn't want it yeah. to shift, so I was kind of like trying to get rid of the shifting. Yeah. Um, whereas yesterday I toned it down, and it, it felt much better. But I still felt that I, for me. I felt that it's not smart enough yet. It doesn't anticipate my shifting accurately. There was a, there's a few moments where I've been riding it and I've gone, this is amazing. Mm. Where like, I've been going across a super rooty, rocky technical bit. And the last thing I want to do is peel my thumb off the grip to hit the shifter and it just shifted gear. And I was like, oh, that's fantastic. But those instances are like three instances and in the three rides I've had where yeah. there's been numerous instances where it hasn't shifted when I want it to shift or it's shifted too late, or it's shifted when I didn't expect it to shift. So that it's still like, it's brilliant that you can have it on or off, like just you just hit the switch and turn it on or off. But I, for me, it just seems like it's at, it's at the start of the journey. I think I would broadly agree with you. I think it's only gonna get better. From my perspective, I was happier to let it do its thing on the climbs. Not technical, but more just undulating. I was kind of, yeah, I could, I knew I know it's not going to shift exactly when I want it to because actually a few times I would shift when I wanted to because my instincts just, just sort shift. of kicked uh, in. But if I just let, let it do its thing, I was like, okay, I know it's not perfect, but I'm, I quite like the fact that I can just switch my brain off and and just have a chat or whatever and just and chill out. But then on the descents yesterday, you were telling me that you were turning it off. I turned it off on the descents. Yeah. I didn't want it to shift when I wasn't expecting it to. Yeah. Because I couldn't, I couldn't trust it to stay in the gear that I wanted it to. So if especially like if you like you're pedaling to hit a jump or pedaling to get a gap. Or, yeah, yeah. So if, if suddenly you increase your your pedal speed and it shifts down the block into a harder gear and you're just like, oh, yeah. you're coming into a jump. You don't want that to happen. Totally. So I think that aspect I was I wanted to just be in control. And you can. It's it's really and the thing is it's really easy to toggle between on and off. But that was at a bike park and there's jumpy stuff. At Tweed Valley, where it was, it's mostly kind of more technical. There's a lot more steep stuff. Riding the brakes more than the pedals. Yeah, yeah. It was. I was happier to let it do mm. its thing. It still wasn't as you know fast uh, as I wanted it to be because it can't see down the trail. It can't see what's coming. It can't predict. 
And it doesn't know whether you're going down or up either. No, it doesn't. But it, it, was, it was less of an issue. It was less consequential of it sort yeah. of being in the wrong gear at the wrong time. So I was kind of happy to, to, to let it go. I like the, the coast shift aspect. So we haven't talked about coast yeah. shift. Basically, when you set your pedals level and you're coasting along and it will actually change gear for you, it will just start, the motor will crank the drivetrain round and shift the gear. There was an example at the top of one of the trails at Tweed Valley. So you're on a flat bit and it me immediately goes down into a, a narrow rut. There's stumps and stuff. Uh, so you don't want to pedal. You don't want to put a pedal stroke in <laughs> yeah. at all, but I've, I've climbed up to this point. I haven't really had time to to then drop think down, about my, it. you know, yeah, yeah. I'm still way up the block on one of the, the big sprockets. As soon as I've dropped into this track, it's like moved down like three or four sprockets and I'm in a much better gear for that descent. So that was really cool and I've got no risk of clipping my pedals anywhere and getting spat over the bars or anything. So that that was cool. I've had that happen to me too, which I thought was really cool. The, the, the flip side of it too is though it can leave me in too hard of a gear when I kind of break hard into a corner and go to come out again. And I'm like, yeah. oh yeah, it's, it hasn't, an, it can't anticipate what I've just yeah. done. So like you can't expect it to do everything for you. It's not at that level yet. So I took this bike for a day, well, for a whole morning. I just went off my own. I thought, you know what, like this is kind of cool, but I also wanted, I hadn't spent any time on the Vivid Shock. Yeah. So and like, and I knew it was really like tunable. And what I figured out really quickly was that I wanted one setting for the top part and a yeah. different setting for the bottom part. And what was really cool was because the shocks just got like a really, like I think it's got five positions and you can just go from minimum to maximum like that. Yeah. And I was like, this is, this is amazing. And then I thought, you know what I need? I need flight attendant. Yeah. And I was like, oh, if this bike had flight attendant, the suspension could work automatically. And also it would have tilt sensors and it would have the, it would know if I was going uphill or downhill. It would know yeah. if I was cornering with the G-forces. So the shifting could maybe be more intelligent. Yeah. So I went back and I said to the guys at SRAM, I was like, ah, oh, why can't you have this bike with flight attendant on it? And they said, we wanted to keep it simple. And it is simple, isn't it? Like you said, two batteries, two modes, you get on it, you turn it on. And if you don't even know which way around those paddles go for shifting up or down, you could literally just ride off and it'd do it for yeah, you. Yeah. But I think the next level, it might not have flight attendant, but it might have some of those, if they can work out how to do it so that the bike's pre-calibrated or something like that, so it will know if you're going up or going downhill, they can, they can definitely bring some more metrics into it that it'll be able to anticipate better and shift when exactly when you want it to. Yeah, I, th I think you're, you're right. It's only gonna get more advanced, only gonna get better in terms of performance. It's like the start of a journey, isn't it? I mean, yeah, yeah, totally. Everything you look, I mean, look at, at cars, look at cars, you know, like yeah, yeah automatic like we were gearboxes. talking about earlier. If you went back to an automatic gearbox from 20 years ago, you wouldn't touch it. No, <laughs> it's like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah like, and I think, you know, and I think it's what's really cool is that it's an added feature. You can, you can ride with it on, you can ride with it off. It's not the sell point on this bike for me. Yeah. I like the motor, I like that it's quiet, I like the power, I like the battery capacity. The shifting's good, the geo's good, the suspension's good. It's a great bike. Does auto shift add anything for me? I'm like, I'm gonna take it or leave it. Thing is for me, really, with the whole powertrain thing, auto shift isn't the story. It's a feature. Yeah. It's not the story. It's just a feature. Yeah. It shouldn't detract from everything else that, that they've kind of brought here. Yeah. So new SRAM powertrain. Uh, I think from our initial impressions, it's thumbs up for the power, for the range, for the simplicity, and for just how quiet the system is in use. But I think when it comes to the auto shift, we're sort of, it's early days, isn't it? Totally. We're, we've seen some glimpses of how good it could be, but we're not there yet. And there was a lot to bring out all in one go. It is. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like you can't expect everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So hope you enjoyed that. Let us know in the comments what your views are on the computers taking control of your ride. Oh, AI's taking over. <laughs> <laughs>